my work history, above on the right in blue are names of mentors, heroes, associates, and others that stand out for influencing me. Note that my heroes here predate Pratt as leaders in space, astronomy, and telescope building. This is the first rendering I did for GM Siling as a summer student in orientation class. I was assigned to work for Bob McLean, who led the original Firebird program. Vice President Harley Earl led everything in styling. Both were mentors. These photos are from GM's 50th anniversary celebration in 1958. Harley Earl kicked off the Firebird 3 program in styling with these bullets. The operative defining expression was, when you go to Las Vegas to see a floor show, you don't expect to see your wife on the stage, you expect to see your real floozy. Following Earl's bullets, the first sketch was of a crowd scene. Theme sketches followed to the moon and a string drawing technique was developed, giving mathematical properties to the line. Encouraged by the results, our boss, Bob McLean, approved a new mock-up to the theme. Contrary to conventional practice, it was built as a Pratt Institute Rowena Reed style of 3D space kit. When reviewed later by Harley Earl, it was immediately bought off with, this will be the Firebird 3, and then go to clay. For approximately a year and a half, the design was executed and resolved to be ready for the 1959 Motorama. The original space sketch remained in our studio the entire as of time as a guide to achieving our visual objective. This overview shows the key personnel and their tasks. In this photo, the GM photographer prepares to take the classic photo of Harley Earl with the three Firebirds the Firebird 3 representing his last concept car. Bill Mitchell would replace him as VP of styling. This quote of Professor Carl Olson attests to its design resolution. And in this review of my book, Mr. DeSico is very complimentary. There was some wind down after Firebird 3 and in the transition to Bill Mitchell's ascendancy as head of styling with investigations into different vehicle architectures in this XP721 Ram Wing concept. I explored an opportunity that came up and accepted a transfer to the GM Defense Research Laboratories in Santa Barbara. The most noticeable change outside the obvious content of the work was in the conversion to a proposal nature of most black and white graphics supporting customer-centered marketing efforts. Interesting in the presentation of proposals was the adaptation of graphic styles and techniques uniquely applied to special circumstances. Also shown on the upper right is a support exercise assisting GM R&D computer graphics programmers in the early CAD days. These figures are intended to show that in the earliest days very little was known of the lunar surface for sizing vehicle systems of any type. The biggest question was whether soil properties were mostly volcanic or meteoric in nature. A concern by Professor Tom Gold of Cornell was that the surface may be a fairy castle dust in structure held together by static electricity only, and that vehicles would sink deep into the dust and be lost. The SLRB shown here was proposed to be landed on site by a surveyor spacecraft to certify out an Apollo site to be safe. These views show a proposed lunar mobile laboratory. The MTA shown lower left was a test vehicle built by GMDRL. The chassis at one-sixth the true vehicle weight would behave on Earth exactly like a full vehicle on the moon. Before we went further with large vehicles, our attention returned to support Apollo. The most pressing issues were whether rovers should be one man or two men. That is, do we want to risk losing one or both astronauts? Left GM before they won the contract to build the rovers. Shown here is the lunar rover with its key people. 
to the right is a wheel and drive test that I supported while I was still there and the wheel patent that was shared by several of them. I left GM to join Sunbird Ferrar in Burbank, California to work on the Lockheed L-1011. This overview shows the diversity of the industrial design tasks for passenger accommodations that were covered for the various customers. With completion of the L-1011 contract, I left Sunbird Ferrar to join Roar Industries, deeply involved in mass transportation, having bought the Flexible Bus Company in Ohio and setting up its transportation division in Chula Vista, California, with its own industrial design department. These photos show various stages of the program. This slide shows the manufacturing plan, where most parts are sub-assembled, that is, the seats are already attached to the sidewalls. The floors, roof, chassis, and end caps are all complete, then all collected for final assembly. The first time anyone enters the bus is for the purpose of driving it off. Rohr sold the bus factory and the program to Grumman, and I was transferred to the Marine Division to build the 3K chassis. This was a U.S. Navy 3,000-ton surface effect ship that would ride on a cushion of air to speeds up to 90 knots. In m and I would support design of passive fire protection on the aluminum ship and work on noise and vibration suppression foundation. The Carter administration canceled the program when it came into office and Rohr sold the company to its employees. I went with them, taking my seniority with me. As RMI, we went after worldwide markets and most of my work was in graphics and marketing support. Having purchased the shipyard, RMI built a swath craft on speculation. We bid on LCAC, landing craft air cushion, a hovercraft, which we lost, and a special warfare craft, medium, Swickham, for SEAL team operations, which we won and started building. Unfortunately, RMI ran into problems and went into bankruptcy before it was completed. I joined my old Roar boss in an industrial design office he had started. I worked to perform on a small business innovative research contract he had for a locomotive engineer and alerter device. Some of the analysis and report data shown here. I also submitted a proposal based on my telescope pattern as a principal investigator to conduct a proof of concept test to validate Earth based observatories using gyroscopic devices for tracking. It was not approved for follow on. I returned to the Roar Aircraft Division as a new employee as Group Engineer of Design the Cost, leading a value engineering team for cost reduction of engine nacelle inlet, fan cowl, and thrust reverser system. In a secondary assignment, I performed to report risk management for Roar on thermal protection issues on the Lockheed Martin team for the X-33. The Roar X-33 was also supported with concepts for design, manufacture, of thermal protection aero surfaces as shown here, titanium sandwich structures for less critical topside surfaces. Seals were the highest risk items of the thermal protection system. This illustration calls attention to a graphics change in drawing techniques with the establishment of PowerPoint as a universal corporate communications tool. PowerPoint contains its own graphic tools and conventional drawing te techniques have been abandoned to almost exclusively utilize the PowerPoint media. This slide demonstrates those PowerPoint techniques as applied for conceptual designs in the cases shown concepts for patents already published and now in public domain are shown with their conceptual design as they were submitted. Otherwise, this is a list of my patents awarded or pending. Following issuance of my patent, experiences gained in telescope making tooling, and especially the hands-on lessons of advanced prototyping played heavily to the benefit of my day job, Values Added. In March of 2015, I received a Career Achievement Award from Pratt Institute at the University Club in Manhattan. Ironically, only a few blocks from where my career began with the showing of the Firebird II at the 1956 Motorama in the Waldorf Astoria Main Ballroom.